For the people at home, who are we here with today? Constance Coco Johnson. Now you had a lot of a lot of problems in the, the Meadville uh, area. Actually, Meadville, the city itself, right? Yes, I did a lot. I, I mean, an incredible amount of racism going on down there. Um, having police brutality. Um, they're they're practic they're, They just make their own laws up. Now, within the, the laws, like like you were uh, wrongfully arrested, right? Yes, I was. I was wrongfully arrested, and then I was held in prison. And in that prison, you, you've and seen and a, a lot of craziness, like a, a them giving people medications. Yes, and I did. I, not only did I see it, but everyone has seen it. There have been reports. Um, the prison society is a active in this, and they are have had investigators come through. Um, State Representative Rowe has come down. Um, there will be a meeting held there Thursday, but it's going to be a closed meeting, only administration, which administration means only the good old boys. Yeah. Now, uh, you got in sick yourself from uh, medication that they, 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 they've given you, right? Yes, I did. I was very, very ill. I had a fever for five days straight. My throat was swollen, it grotesquely like this. You couldn't tell that I even had one, it went straight down. My, you couldn't even see my jaw. And they did nothing, they told me to drink some warm water. Yeah, the nurse Diane there, they have one nurse. They're so short staffed there that they have the COs handing the medication out to the people. Yeah. Now how Some long were you there? Some don't even know what they're taking. Really? How long were you in prison for? I was in prison for 52 and a half days. And uh, violent wise, what was like the violence you seen there? Well, I witnessed um, a lot of violence directed towards a man named Robert Lee. Um, a lot of the other inmates call him Bob. He has been being brutalized viciously down there for a number of years. And subsequently, not just recently, he was in the newspaper twice. Now they've charged him like with this astronomical amount of charges for things that he didn't do. He was defending himself, if anything. They've locked this man in a chair. Um, they've tased him while he's in a chair, handcuffed, beaten him up while he's handcuffed, stomped his side, right side of his face in. Uh, it's just, it's incredible what they're getting away with. Now, who's currently uh, representing you and sticking up for you on your side? Well, I do have an attorney. Um, I have an attorney. His name is Bruce Barrett. And I also have another attorney. His name is Keith Clellan. He's out of Erie. But Bruce Barrett is actually in Meadville himself. Now, what's the organization that helps out prisoners? It's called the Prison Society. And they're an organization based out of Philadelphia. Um, and believe it or not, they, are, they have the right to come into any prison and respond to any prisoner's request to talk to them about any injustices or violations of their civil rights that are going on right then. So these people giving out these medications, they're not certified doctors, right? No, they're not. None of them have any kind of medical background. Um, I don't even think some of them pass a civil servants test. Most of them are married to each other. They work the same shift. The, um, you know, their boyfriend and girlfriend. Uh, just recently, one of the one of the times that Bob got the last this last vicious attack on him was a married or not a married couple. They've been dating for two years. Yeah. So, and they just all just stick up for each other and tell whatever lie they have to tell to abuse the law. Now, what do you know on record that 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 that's been in the newspaper about these situations in media or similar? Um. What do you mean? Like things on record, like the violence of like... like oh, it's all on record. All of us can get online right now, you know, check it out. All you need to do is go to Meadville Tribune and read their little ragtag newspaper that they have. It's all lies and slander. I myself have been um, defamed in that newspaper. You know, my, it's just, these people will try to ruin your life if you don't agree with their unethical ways. Has there been a lot of investigations uh, in Meadville with the, these officers? Yes, there has. There has for years, and I don't understand why no one's doing anything about it. It's just, you know, we're just, is it, this is America. This is the home of the brave, right? Because I'm feeling like it's the home of the slave right now. I'm not really feeling that brave. It's, it's I'm, I was in fear for my life, honestly. I unraveled a sheet and it had a huge swastika on it. They kept the sheet. <laughs> they kept the sheet. You know, it was funny, it was a big joke to them. Now the sheets are supposed to be checked. They have laundry workers that are men. They don't allow the women to even work. So, I don't know. 
it's, it's now, speaking to the beginning of the story, like uh, what happened for them to arrest you and what was that situation happening in that well, moment? Well, I'm actually seeing someone who lives down there and they didn't like that. He, we're, we're an interracial couple and they really, really found an interracial couple. As a matter of fact, he's been down there so long, I'd say 30 years. He's lived in the same house down there for 10 years. He knows these people, they're his friends. They, they go to parties and you know different children's events together. And now he's outed and I, the main reason is because I'm black and he's white. <laughs> it's that simple. You know, no one, I guess we missed the Michael Jackson song, no, no matter if you're black or white. I think they missed that, they missed that. Now like, uh, what, what, how, how, what are you going to do in uh, law-wise? You contacted a lawyer, right? Yes, I have. I have contacted the NAACP. Um, I'm actually following up more with the people that are closest to me, so I have their names and numbers if they haven't already received an email. Um, but I encourage other people to get get it, you know, get on get on top of your rights because if you don't stand up for yourself, no one else will. Speaking of rights, uh, has the, before you've been arrested, was there a, her, a lot of harassment that led oh up to that? Oh my goodness, yes there was. There was a lot of harassment. When we would go out to the bars, they would harass me. Um, I had actually tried to, I wanted to start a service down there and for the cab, because they have one cab service and sometimes they run, sometimes they don't. They don't, uh, they don't take people like, you know, they say if you're drunk, you should get a free ride home just to keep the world safe so no one gets hurt. They don't do that down there. They have, it's called quarry cab service, but they're all Cadillacs, fleets, fleets of Cadillacs. And they don't have to give you a ride because you're black, so. Is there a lot of harassment by the police when they're off duty? Yeah, definitely. They all hang out in the same spots. And if you should happen to be the poor soul who comes in contact with them, I feel sorry for you. I hope you have what you have in your hand or what most of us have on our cell phone, which is a camera, because you are going to want to tape it, protect yourself, use your voice. Now, do you have any uh, thing or tell anyone else advice about like what they should do if, if a cop's harassing them in that town? Um, yeah, I think that they should contact uh, Mr. Sam Bird, who is a, a part of the Prison Society chapter down there. Um, he's also out at the jail a lot, talking to different inmates that are there about their rights and what you know, whatever might have occurred, whatever you know, getting specifics. So we have a lot of documentation about the situation already, at least 52 days. And a lot of people are getting sick from medication that they're yeah, allergic to. Yeah, people almost died. Uh, there's another lady. Her name is Sally Eakin. She had a stroke. It took them three days to take her to the hospital. Um, Sally, hey girl, we love you. <laughs> um, it's just, it just seems like nobody cares though. Nobody is concerned about this. This is something I can hear and go on with the rest of my day. And your dad, something happened to him. I mean, not your dad, your uncle, right? Yeah, my uncle Arnold, he was violently, violently brutalized by the same cops that did this to me and did this to my boyfriend. Uh, one week after it happened, I was, they had did that to me and then it seems like they sought him out and they violated him so bad they almost killed him. He's, he's, He's doing a lot better now, but uh, his name's Arnold Johnson. He has a dojo down there. It's called American Shotokan. I believe you did a piece about that. Yes, I did. And he seems like someone who would be really good for a the, a, the community. Oh, he is. You know, he inspires he a lot of kids. He has trained half of that force. He knows these officers. They and they, know they beat him is. up. They know that he's a good person. Yeah, they still did it. If it wasn't for his 80-year-old neighbor, white man, yelling off of his porch and then coming off his porch and stopping these officers, my uncle, would, we, we'd be talking about my uncle in past tense, for certain. So uh, do you want to have anything else to share for the people at home that, that it's very important to say that you could get off your back? Uh, it's very important to say that from a touch of a button, you can reach at least a thousand people a day. So why not use your voice? You know, if you see it, then you should be reporting it. You should keep asking questions. Don't let somebody just tell you anything because they may be wrong. Hey, thank you very much. I'm Buzz Andrzejewski. You have just watched a Christian Lestat production.